Hi, everybody. This is Rachelle Starr with the Faculty Training Committee. Um, Jim Babbage is going to be our presenter today for mobile storytelling with Adobe. So I'm very excited to see this. Um, you can post your questions in the question section, and I will go through them um, at the end of the presentation. All right, I hope everybody enjoys this. Um, this is also being recorded. Great, thanks, Rochelle. Hi, everyone, thanks for joining today. Uh, just a quick check to make sure that uh, you can see my screen, and then we can move on. Okay, every, we've got a bunch of yeses, so we're good to go. Great. Excellent, okay. Uh, so, um, again, thanks very much for joining. My name is Jim Babbage. I'm a senior solutions consultant with Adobe, and that means uh, I work with faculty, staff, students, on the education side of things, uh, helping with software, uh, solving problems, things along those lines. I've been with Adobe for about seven years, actually just over seven years now. But prior to joining Adobe, I was a teacher. I taught in higher ed for about 21 years here in Toronto, Ontario, where I live. Uh, so that's a little bit about me, to give you a sense of, of what I'm about. Um, I have a background in commercial photography and web design as well. So today we're here to talk about mobile storytelling workflows. And, and this is something that's really exciting to me from a variety of different perspectives. Um, I think everybody is a storyteller, or at the very least, likes to hear stories. If, if that wasn't the case, television and movies would be out the window. We love story. We love to read, we love to listen, we love to watch. And I think that everyone has their own way of telling a story. Um, and one of the things I've been really excited about over the past few years is, is that I can now start that process of storytelling much earlier than ever before, sort of when I was inspired to do it. Um, and just to give you, before we get into more of that background, just a couple little um, bullet points here to sort of set the, 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 t the mood or the tone here. These are some uh, statistics I pulled up from a recent uh, seminar I was attending. There are over 4.7 billion people globally using a smartphone at this time. And since this statistic has been uh, posted, it's probably higher. 73% of people always have their mobile device with them. I don't know about you. It's my alarm clock. It's my, obviously my phone. It's my, you know, it does so much for me. And with the advent of some of the new mobile apps that are out there, it does even more. And the other interesting uh, point here is about how often people make use of that phone or that device. They pick it up. 150 to 200 times a day, and an average of 177 minutes of daily usage. Now, whether that's a good use of time, so this could be argued one way or the other, but the fact is that these devices have become part of our lives. We do so much with them. We interact with people, we interact with businesses, all sorts of things. Uh, and, and it's just become part of the fabric of our being. And uh, students these days especially, that is their main thing. A mobile device, a smartphone, possibly a tablet, that becomes their main go-to piece of technology uh, in the vast majority. Uh, laptops are st certainly still used, desktop units as well, but the phone is always with them. It's always there, it's always accessible. And that's something really important to think about when we think about this whole concept of mobile storytelling. Um, it used to be when you wanted to tell a story or write a story or create something, you may, might have a meeting or two or more, with um, people you're collaborating with, whether it's, a, whether it's a client, whether it's a teacher, whether it's other classmates, and then you go back to your desk or back to your dorm or back to the computer and start working. Well, you don't have to wait for that anymore. That collaboration process can start right away. Um, and our mobile devices really make this possible. We're gonna be showing you, I'm gonna be showing you a few different things here uh, today. It's a, sort of an action-packed, jam-packed session uh, about storytelling. Um, and that concept of, of being able to start that story or start that creation process wherever you are. Okay, so you don't have to wait to get back to a, a specific static location. You could be out in the field, you can be at Starbucks, you can be anywhere you want. And that process of creation can begin at the moment that you're inspired. Something visual strikes you or a funny idea pops into your head or you hear a story yourself and you want to sort of elaborate on it. These are the kinds of things that can, that can be started right away these days. There's no longer a need to wait to get back to somewhere, hope you remembered something, or hope you sent the right files to um, a collaborator, things along those lines. So we're gonna look at a couple different things. 
we're going to look at sort of a shoot, edit, create workflow. And I'm going to be making use primarily with my tablet in this case, just because the screen's bigger. But everything I'm doing on my tablet, I can do with my phone. And quite often, that's what I do, because I don't tend to hold up my tablet to take pictures. But I use my phone all the time for this. So we're going to look at capturing. We're going to look at the creation process. We're going to look at the sharing process. We're going to look at some of the other mobile apps that Adobe has in play as well for working with those images, a couple of which are listed right here, Photoshop, Mix, and Fix. And if we have time, we're going to take a look at some um, other workflows as well. But if not, if we run out of time, this presentation is a live persistent URL that I can share, and you'll be able to essentially walk through the whole thing uh, whenever you want. Okay, so it'll always be up online. So, Let's do a little bit of um, break down the process here, the way I think about things. And you may think about things a bit different, uh, but this is the way I sort of approach my, my creative process. Capturing. So I do shoot with a DSLR as well, but I do a significant amount of photography on my mobile phone and videography as well. Uh, I'll capture that content, that st the still images. I'll edit that content in Lightroom CC for mobile right on my phone. In fact, I'm actually capturing my images through the Lightroom mobile app as well. Uh, I'll add them to a collection, you know, the ones I really want to work with, uh, sort of to separate them from everything else that's, um, that's in my sort of gallery of imagery. And then I have them available for me to use in other applications as well because of that. The other thing I can do is if it's not photography that I'm into, I could obviously shoot video, right, uh, using either the, the phone's own video camera uh, application or uh, through tools that Adobe has, like a Premiere Clip, or what you may have heard about, um, briefly, we recently announced that we're going to be launching a new video app coming this October called uh, called Adobe uh, Premiere Rush. So that's another one that's coming out. Uh, Project Rush is a really interesting application from the standpoint of video editing, makes things very easy, and is a sort of a a cousin to uh, Premiere Pro. So they have a lot of a lot of ways to work together. Uh, as well, you've got uh, the ability to capture other types of content, whether that's vector shapes or text or patterns or textures or color themes using another application called Adobe Capture. We're going to look at some of these applications as we go through here. So the creation process is, um, it can be started in many different ways. It can be started right at that point where you're actually capturing images or video. It can also be uh, captured with other tools, creating illustrations, um, creating collages, image collages, using tools like Adobe Spark, another one we'll look at, or creating layouts using uh, another one of the mobile apps in Adobe's uh, cadre of, of mobile apps called Adobe Comp. And then we've got the ability to create composites, the kind of thing you would do normally in Photoshop, right inside my phone or my tablet. And we also, as I mentioned earlier, can edit video, can create video slideshows even with um, Premiere Clip. So once you've sort of got down, created your content, built out all your assets, and started to tell your story, and we'll look at a couple of ways that that story can be can be shared or, or be created, uh, you've got lots of options to share this. And this is one of the things that's really important here. It's that concept of publishing or sharing the work. It's not just something you keep to yourself and put in the filing cabinet when you're done. It's about getting that information out there through social media channels, through your own blog, uh, through um, your your website, whatever it happens to be, through email even. So once you've created some content that you're really proud of, you want to make sure that other people get a chance to see it and experience it, and hopefully get a reaction out of it as well. You know, be that you know uh, something that they you want them to react strongly against uh, about in terms of emotional content from a social justice perspective. Maybe it's just some humor and you want to make people smile. Whatever that happens to be. It's not just about creating the content, it's also about sharing the content. And that's a, a really important component as well. Okay, so let's, we're gonna stop there on my little presentation and we're gonna actually hop into some applications. So bear with me for a second while I switch things around. And there we go. And what we have here is, other than the announcement of a game I tend to play when I'm on an airplane is my tablet. And we're going to start off by taking a look at Lightroom. So I'm just going to open up Lightroom. And Lightroom is a tool that is a desktop tool as well. But it is also uh, a mobile application and a pretty powerful one too. In fact, the, the feature set with the mobile application 
is significantly close to what you get in the desktop application as well. A lot of editing capabilities are built into this uh, application these days. And there's your, my smiling face in a couple spots. I do a lot of documentary photography covering events and things like that. So I can go ahead and transfer these images. Either I've shot them on my phone or shot them on my DSLR, transfer them over to Lightroom and Lightroom Mobile, and I can start that editing process and that selection process as well. So I can pick up any image that I want here, for example, just grab one of these guys here, and you'll see I've got the ability to control things very significantly. I can control exposure just by dragging these sliders, contrast, highlight shadows. From a photographer's perspective, I have a lot of granular control over making this image look as good as I want it to look. Maybe I'll take down the highlights a little bit there and maybe make it a little bit darker. There we go, something like that. I can go around and play around with effects and sort of maybe make this a little bit more, a little bit vignette around the edges. So we darken down the edges and maybe bring up the midtone contrast a little bit too. So I can continue to play with this and experiment with it and get the results that I want. Now I can do this one uh, from image to image. I'm, as I'm working on this, it, the changes are actually being updated on my desktop as well, which is really cool. So when I get back home, back to my office, I've got the ability to continue that work if I want to, or to do other things uh, with the desktop app that uh, might be, maybe I can't do with the mobile app, like uh, setting up for printing and so on and so forth. But in the meantime, what I can do here, right within this application, is if I've got an image in particular that I really, really like, I can go ahead and start that sharing process. You see, I tap on that little share icon uh, in the upper right corner there, and I can choose to share, I can save, um, a JPEG file to my camera roll. I can save it to the files folder on my mobile device. I can open it in a different application or I can edit it in a different application. So if I choose share, it'll start to render an image. Uh, save to camera roll just saves the image to, to my camera roll. I'm gonna go ahead and choose open in. And you'll see I get two choices here, a smaller image or a maximum uh, resolution image, depending on what my uses are for, what my use of this image is going to be for. Uh, I can pick one or the other. I'm just going to go with small, so a little bit faster. And this is going to render the image. And then I can choose from these various mobile applications on my device uh, to share that. In my case here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go over to Instagram. Add that to my feed. And I can just start that process with Instagram where I can, again, add Instagram's own filters if I want to or I can go right to the step where I'm going to write a caption, a tag individual, add a location, and share that content. In this case, I'm going to cancel out of this and go back out to Lightroom here for a minute. There we go. Just to, it just gives you a sense of what we can do with this. So I've got that flexibility right from the point of, of capture, where I can work with the image, I can edit the image, and I can share the image. Now, as well as being able to share it here, I can also use this in a series of other images to start more of a storytelling process as well. Now, in this case, this was an event, an educational event I was at in Utah just last week. So I can go ahead and do all my edits and actually do a write-up, a review or an overview or a summary of this event in my own words and get that posted out to social media uh, fairly quickly as well. And let me show you what the process is for that. So I'm gonna hide this. And I'm going to go into another application called Adobe Spark Page. Now, the Spark tools are free. Uh, you can access them. In fact, all the mobile apps are free to download and use. Um, Spark tools are storytelling tools. Uh, there's three flavors right now. There's what we call Spark Page, which is more for creating single, unique web pages. Uh, there's Spark Post for creating social media graphics with text impact. And there's Spark Video for creating, well, but it sounds like video with video animation and voiceover. Um, Spark page is something I quite like because I love to write. And in this case here, if I click on the uh, my pages icon here, you'll see that there's quite a few. <laughs> I do a lot of work in Spark page. These are all different stories that I've written. In fact, you might notice in the very top corner there on the left, um, an image that looks very similar to what we saw at the beginning of my presentation. The presentation you were looking at originally was built inside a Spark page. So in this case though, I'm gonna start by clicking on the plus sign. And all three of the Spark tools are like this. They're, they're as easy as clicking on a plus sign. We often say, if you can click on a plus sign, 
you can create a page, or you can create a post, or you can create a video. So I'm gonna start this process by adding a title. I'm just gonna call this Creative Campus and hope that my typing comes off nice and easy. There we go, Oops, there we go. Always, you know it's live when you make a spelling mistake. Uh, I'm just gonna type in University, Oops, bear with me for a sec here. Utah, okay. Now, next thing I wanna do with this is I wanna set the tone. Other than a title and maybe a subhead, I want to set the tone with a really powerful image. So I'm going to click on the, that little plus sign and tap on the icon that says photo. And you can see along here, I've got the ability to pull images from a variety of different places. Um, I am, if I've got images on my, on my device, I can pull them from there. I can take a new photograph. I can go to my Creative Cloud account and find imagery there. I can go into my Lightroom uh, folders and look through there or Dropbox or Google Photos. And I'm going to eventually pull in from Lightroom, but just to give you a sense, one of the things that I want people to be aware of with tools like this is that you don't have to be a photographer or a videographer uh, or an illustrator to actually work with these tools. If you are creating communications for a business, for a proposal, for fundraising, for research, whatever it happens to be, you're not limited uh, because you may not feel comfortable taking pictures yourself. I've got an option right here called Find Free Photos, and I'm gonna type in here, you talk, hit the return key, and this pulls up a huge, vast array of, of royalty-free images, Creative Commons-based images that I can use with inside of my presentation. So whatever catches my eye, and this is the idea here, is we wanna catch the eye, we wanna grab the eye. So I'm gonna, I think I'll start with this guy right here. Just like that, I've got my process going. And Bam, basically that image is really powerful. There's rich color, rich texture, and it really captures, captures the eye and captures my mood. So I continue this process on, let's get my cursor out of the way, by scrolling. And as soon as I scroll down, I see I've got options to do a few different things. I can add more photos, I can add text, I can add buttons for hyperlinks, I can link to a, a, a video I've got uh, stored on YouTube or Vimeo. Um, I can create what's called a photo grid, which is an image collage. And I can also create something called a glide show. And we'll take a look at a couple of these different things here. So we saw how easy it was to add a photo. We did that already with the, with the cover image. So I'm just gonna start with some text here. Tap on the text icon and, whoops, there we go. I'm just gonna go ahead and type. And I'm not gonna type a lot of text because it's never much fun watching people type. Uh, but I'll just put in a little bit of text here. Okay, and that process can continue on from there. Now, as well as just being able to type text, I can format it. You can see at the very top of the screen, I can set up headings, H1s or H2s, or pull quotes. I can do bulleted lists, numbered lists. I can just do basic formatting, like bold, italic, or create a hyperlink from the text that's there. And I can also control alignment as well. So that process is all there, it's easy to do. I'm not having to figure out how the software works. And this is one of the things I love about a lot of these tools, these mobile apps, and the ones Adobe's come out with, um, I think are, are very good at this. They take the technology and put it in the back seat. It's, 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 it, there's, uh, the learning curve is basically flat with a tool like SparkPage, and you are basically at the, uh, put in the spot of just being able to create, telling your story, being inspired, having fun, and making that story have the most impact you possibly can get. And the great thing about this is I can always change things. It's nothing's written in stone. I can change the text. I can swap out the images and so on. So I could type in some text here. I'm just gonna type in, I'm just gonna go here. Uh, I'll do a bit more text. Um, again, just clicking in that plus sign. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type week one. And in this case, I'm gonna make that a heading. So there we go. And I can continue that process on. So as I move down, I'll click the plus sign again. Maybe this time I'll do a photo grid. Now in this case here, again, I can go right back to those Utah images. But in my case, this time around, I'm going to go into Lightroom. Because I have a whole album of images from this event. And bear with me as I scroll down. It takes a little few seconds for things to load up as we go. There we go, just pull this one up. There we are. 
And I can start that process of creating what we call a photo grid. So I can go ahead and select images, grab a couple of horizontal images, somebody cooking pizza, a sunset, and then maybe uh, a group shot, bit of a panoramic there, another vertical, and I can continue to add to this as I go. Uh, now, while I'm putting them in here, I still have complete control over how these images look. You'll notice as I select each image, grab this group shot here, uh, and I can select, uh, I can choose where, what order I want these images to fall in. So if I think that this group shot needs to be over on the left, I can just tap on the little arrow key, the arrow icon, and move it over to the left. If I think that an image, specifically this one, for example, really needs to be bigger, needs to be larger, I can Oops, don't want to replace it. I want to resize it so I can make it a large feature image. And I can continue to go down through these images. I can add more to it. And when I'm happy with it, I just click done. And that loads that grid of images into my story. So I can further embellish this with text. Obviously, I can add a caption to the photo grid. Uh, one of the nice things about photo grids is that you can, when you're actually published this URL, uh, as a story, uh, each of the images can be tapped on and seen in a larger view. So you're not stuck with seeing small thumbnail images or smaller images. You can see them in a large viewpoint as well. So I can continue this process on, right? Um, I'm going to add one last thing in here. I'm going to go add a glide show. And a glide show is kind of, I think of it like a presentation in a presentation. It gives me the ability to add really large images, but also gives me the ability to incorporate other elements like text and other photographs with that. So in this case here, I'm gonna grab, I think an image, let's see here, something that's got a nice background to it. And where'd you go? I scroll too fast, it's just catching up with me loading. So bear with me for one sec. I'll just grab something here, let's see. Yeah, let's go with this one. All right, so I can add as many images as I want to this. Each one of them will have space for additional content. So I'm gonna add this image and maybe that one. All right, and I'm gonna click done. And what I get, if I scroll down here, you'll see I have a full screen image. And you'll notice a little bit of parallax happening here, a little bit of animation happening. And I've got this content box inside of each of these large images. So I can click on the plus sign and further add to the story. I can add additional photographs, text, hyperlinks, or videos. Okay, so I've got that capability right inside there. And if I scroll down to the next one, there's another box there. Now what I'd like to do maybe is add a little bit of visual variety. I'm going to put that box over on the left, sorry, on the right side. So we've got one box here on the, on the left. The next content area will be on the right. And I can keep on adding to this, very much the same way as I've done everything else. It's sort of like a wash, rinse, repeat process. It, it gets very easy to, uh, to, to build out the content because you're not focusing on how do I make the software do what I want it to do. It's presenting me with the options in a very visual manner. It's very easy to understand how these things work. Now, one of the things you'll make notice here is there's a certain style of text, style of the background colors and so on. I've got the ability to change this as well. So if I take a look here in the upper right corner, you'll see a little option looks like a magic wand, and these are the themes. So I can choose from a variety of stock themes, and it changes the overall look and feel. If I choose Trek, for example, question. you'll notice that Jim, we end up with, yes, sorry? I'm sorry, quick question. I wanna make yeah. sure that everybody's on the same page, so to speak. This is, you're currently in Adobe page, correct? Yes. Are you in Adobe Page currently? Yes, I am. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we had a question and I didn't want to answer okay. it incorrectly. Thanks. Sure, that's no problem. No problem at all. Anytime, just pop pop up and I'll I'll answer as much as I can. So in this case, I can pick from a variety of different templates. Again, the idea here is ease of use, make things fast. These are templates. They're they're themes. You can't really customize the individual themes. They have their own different text styles, your own background styles, your own animation styles. But the point is that you're trying to find something that you feel works best with the story you're trying to tell. Now, and there's quite a few of them in here. I'm not gonna go through every single one of them, but you can see that things do change. 
So I also have the ability to make some other changes. So if I go ahead and select on that text, whoops, bear with me for a sec. Normally I can move that around, but it's not behaving itself today. Okay. Uh, many of them, you can actually change the alignment of the title and bring it to the top, bring it down to the bottom, over to the left, over to the right. Again, to create a little bit more of your own style, right? And once I've got something I'm happy with, my next step with this is sharing. We talked about that before. We've got the, we capture, we create, we share. So there's an option right over here in the upper right corner to share. And I just tap on that and I see a thumbnail of the image. I pick a category. In my case, I'm going to say education. Uh, I can set the author attribution. So there's me, my smiling mug. And I can also edit credits. So in this case, remember, I pulled one image uh, from that image search. It wasn't one of my photographs, uh, one of the arch. So automatically, Spark page pulls in the credit for that image, which is great. So I've got some basic attribution going on with images that are not my own. And then I can continue to add to this if I want to. So I can just hit the return key, uh, all other photos. Oops. Bye. Babbage. There we go. And just tap done. And then I have options to share. I can share with Spark page right through to Facebook, to Twitter, by email, through Messenger, or I can copy uh, the published URL uh, to the clipboard and then send it out uh, in any other way I want by, uh, you know, through other, other social media channels or whatever it happens to be. I also have the option down below, below you'll see this big button that says that currently create unlisted link. This is a bit of a privacy option for you uh, at the moment. What will happen is when this is published, it's not going to be searchable. It's not going to be discoverable by search engines. So if that's important to me, then I can, I can leave it as it is. But if I want this to get noticed, if I want it to eventually potentially get picked up by search engines or by uh, the Spark team itself to possibly feature on the Spark website, I just tap that Get Notice button, and you'll see it changes to Create Public Link. If I'm not ready to show this to the world, <laughs> and I'm not done yet, so that's probably a good plan, I can choose to create unlisted link. I can always change my mind later on. So I tap that and it'll take a minute or so uh, for Spark to actually generate the HTML page. And when it's done, it'll come up with a URL that I can copy and paste out. There's the, uh, the link itself. If I wanna see what it looks like uh, as a finished piece, I can just tap on the link. It's gonna load up my browser and show me the final published piece as other people would see it. It's that easy. Now, if I catch something I don't like, or if I want to add to this later on, no big deal. I just go back over to Spark page and I'll back over to my editing mode. Now, one thing I, I skipped over, um, we saw the finished pieces that was published, but if I'm doing a lot of work here, I may want to see this a bit more often than just publishing it every few minutes. So I can always tap on the little play icon near the upper right corner, and that's going to give me a preview of how this would look to somebody viewing the page after it was published. So I see it exactly the same way. You'll notice all the editing icons are gone, all the plus signs are gone, the spacing's a little bit different because there's not the gaps that we had earlier. And once I'm happy with how that looks, I just close that and I'm back to my editing mode. And by the way, one other thing I'll point out here, that image that we picked or that I picked for the cover. If you take a look down near the bottom right corner of the image, you'll see a little eye icon. If I tap that, I actually see the credit information as well. So uh, great resource from that perspective. So I can use my own imagery. I can search for royalty-free images. I can mix and match that to my heart's content uh, to tell the story in the best, most effective way that I, that I, I want. So I'll pop back out to my main Spark page here. So that's one of those tools, right, from a storytelling perspective. And I mentioned earlier, I do this quite a bit. I, I write tutorials with Spark page. I write thought pieces. I publish photography. I'm not going to uh, open all these up for you to see, but I cover a lot of events. Uh, that's just a thing I like to do when I go out to an Adobe event, and also things like horsing events I um, stuff like that. Uh, and my own thoughts about photography, imagery, things along those lines. So there's quite a quite a range of stuff in here. 
And one of the things that's kind of nice with the way Spark Page handles this, and from a from a user's perspective, I think this is kind of kind of nice. We're we're kind of in an instant gratification world in, in its own way, right? We like to have results right away. Um, tools like Spark give me the ability to create something very quickly, but I also like to find out, is anybody paying attention? Is anybody watching? Is anybody listening? And you'll see beside many of these stories, little eyeball icons tells me how many views this page has gotten, how many unique views, and how many people have clicked on what we call the appreciator like button. So I get a little bit of a statistic there, a little bit of hopefully an emotional boost to the work I put into a story, getting a sense of who's actually seen it. And it is a little exciting when you uh, produce something and you share the link uh, through social media to start seeing that little tally um, grow and grow and grow. And I'll give you one example here. Um, you'll see this one called Starry Starry Night. This is a, a one I did on, on astrophotography. I shoot a lot of photographs of the night sky. And this got shared through a couple other social media channels and featured in a couple places. And unlike many of my other stories, which get you know several hundred views in many cases, this one's actually close to 24,000 views, or 20, 2,400 views, sorry. 2,400? Yeah, 23, yeah, that's a lot, anyway. <laughs> so, so that's kind of a nice little boost, and I get to see how many people liked it, how many people have viewed it. So it's kind of a, a, a nice little way to sort of see the success of the work I'm doing, to know that people are actually having a look and, and, it, and sort of experiencing the story or my ideas at the same time. Now, I want to quickly show you a couple of the other Spark tools because they are so easy to use. Then we're going to jump into some of the other mobile apps. Uh, the other one I use quite a bit myself is Spark Post. Now, Spark Post is, I mentioned earlier, for creating social media graphics. So I'm just going to click on the Spark Post icon here. And by the way, if you don't have an iOS device, I'm on an iPad right now, an iPhone, um, you can access the Spark tools through a web interface. It's spark.adobe.com, and I'll show you that as well in a minute. And we are currently in active beta uh, for Android versions of the applications, which is really exciting um, to see that that's coming through. So, so eventually, I'm not exactly sure when, but we're going to see these apps uh, come across to the Android devices as well. Okay, so let's just close the little prompt screen here. And again, very similar to Spark Page, I have a collection of all the things I've done. And, and kind of like what you saw earlier, I do a lot of these things. So this is one I did while I was in Utah last week, and I was published this live during the, during the event. I can go ahead and view this. I can duplicate it. I can choose to edit it or delete it. I'm just going to go ahead and tap on the edit button here. And what this is basically is a tool for working with single or multiple graphics to create collages or social media type graphics. You'll see I've got text in here, I've got imagery. And if I select the text, in fact, you know what I'm gonna do? Because I actually like that layout. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that one more time and I'm gonna duplicate it. And I can give it a name, I'm just gonna leave it like that. That way I don't lose my original layout because I tend to do that, I get started on something and then I lose what I had originally that I really liked. So I can go ahead and I can grab, say, this text box. This is repositionable pretty much anywhere. I can change the order of the images. For example, maybe I think this image of the Lehigh uh, campus for Adobe might be better off down at the bottom. So I can go ahead and drag it and swap it around. Actually, I need to, I need to be in my editing mode. There we go. So there, ah, misbehaving itself at the moment. So, but I can reposition things, I can change the layout, I can resize these things as well for different social media channels. So we'll take a look at both of these things. For example, there's my layout option. So I've already got multiple images in here and some text. And using what we call Sensei, our artificial intelligence for at Adobe, it's actually analyzing the images, the content that's there, all the different assets, and giving me a whole series of suggested design options for laying this out in different ways. So you can see there's a half a dozen of these. I can tap on any one of these and totally change the look and feel of the layout just like that. In fact, if I keep tapping even the same one, it'll just keep switching imagery around for me. Yeah, so I can decide where I want to be with that and what I like, what I don't like. Now, at the moment, you'll notice this is kind of a square format. It's really set up for a traditional Instagram layout. But if I want to change this, maybe I want it to go to Facebook or to Twitter uh, or Pinterest, I can choose resize. And you'll see all the different aspect ratios for the different social media channels are here. For example, let me go to, oh, let's take, uh, 
let's go to Facebook here. And as I change that, notice what happens here. My, my live content, like my text, is always kept in place. It's never cropped out. The images get adjusted as needed to fill the new space. And I can go ahead and decide, you know what, maybe I want these images to be narrower. I can go and select each one of these individually. Maybe just get the mountains in here. Like so, and this one here, same idea. Create a little more of an abstract graphic. Take the text that's there. It's also, it's been resized a little bit. So I'm going to click done. I'll grab that text and I will scale that up. And I'll get my little logo out of there eventually as well. Just drop that down there. I'm doing this all with my finger, by the way. I do have a Apple Pencil, but I keep forgetting to charge the darn thing up. So there we go. So I can go ahead and drop that in. If I don't like the look of this text, I can change the fonts. You can see right now down at the bottom of the screen, lots of choices for fonts. I can change the alignments. I can change the spacing. I can change the opacity. I can even change the background shape that's there. So if I tap on shape, currently it's just a square. Maybe I want to do rounded rectangle. Maybe I'd rather have something more like a solid box that runs across. Oh, I don't really like that so much. But maybe I'll go ahead and try something else. Like, uh, let's go with this one. A little ribbon effect, right? So I can go ahead and set that up however I want, rescale that a little bit, choose a different font if I like, change the colors as well. A lot of great controls here. Uh, one of the nice things about this process is that Spark page, post, and video have a lot of design guardrails built into them. So I don't have to be a professional designer and uh, have a huge breadth of knowledge in color theory and so on to get the process started. So in the case here of the text, if I'm not really sure I like those colors, colors which, by the way, were analyzed and pulled from the other images, I can go and click on the color options here, and I can select from branding color options to uh, Suggested colors, you can see these ones here, where it's a suggested, much like those layouts, those are colors that have been, been essentially pulled from my existing design. So we'll see some earth tones, some blues. And if there's something here and specifically that I like, I can go ahead and tap on that. I can change the order of it. I can even customize those colors if I want to change them somewhat, maybe make this blue a little more intense. So something like that, there we go. So I've got lots of flexibility here. And very much like we saw before, when I'm, when I'm ready to go, when I'm ready to share this, there's my option, share in this case. I can create something called a remixable, remixable copy, which means I could share this with other people and they can take those images and do something with them different, or they can just use the existing layout and put their own photographs in there. I can share to Facebook, Instagram, Messenger. I can save the image to my camera roll. I can, create a, I can create a link and link to it through, uh, through a blog post. And I can set it by email and more things. So lots of options for sharing this content. Now, if I go back to my post, I kind of showed you how I built something that already existed. Same process applies like we saw with Spark Page when we start with new content. So in my case here, I'm gonna go and much like we saw earlier, I'm gonna go to my photo library in this case. Maybe grab something out of here. Some of these images are the same. Maybe grab this one right here. And maybe this one. And maybe this one. Okay, so I'm picking and choosing imagery as I go. And when I'm ready to, I've got all the images I want, I just click the Add button, and it's automatically going to build out a basic layout for me. Now I can change that. I can go to Instagram Landscape, for example, or I can go to Instagram Portrait. And I can readjust the imagery as well. Maybe make that a little bit bigger just by pinching and zooming. And again, once I've got that general look and feel, I just tap done. It drops a text box in there. I can edit this if I want to say something. I can even delete the text box if I really don't want to say anything. I don't want anything in text. I can remove it. But in this case here, I'm just going to go back and I'm going to go to my layout options. And again, you'll see there's a whole series of suggested layouts. All right, so in my case here, I think I kind of like what I've got, but I'll just try a slight different look and feel. And again, I can randomize this by just tapping on that little icon until I get the look and feel that I want. It's that simple. The text is just a question of double tapping, typing your text, and moving on. You can add additional text blocks if you want to. You can change, the, as we saw, the color and so on 
of the text as well um, and change the, how the background is, is applied. And I can always come back to these later on and edit them and change them. Either create duplicates like I did earlier or create brand new content based on, on something, uh, new images that I may have, have taken. Okay. So I'm going to hop out of there. And as you can see, I do quite a few of these. And uh, I do them for events. I do them for, I have a cottage up here in uh, Eastern Ontario. And I count down the days. And I do this as a social media thing through Instagram and Facebook. And just sort of generating excitement for myself and for my followers as well. And probably a little bit of envy. <laughs> but that gives you an idea of the kinds of things you can do there. Now, if I hop out of here, I'm just going to switch back over. And where are we? I may need to search for this one, I think. There we go, Spark Video. OK. It's one of the ones I didn't have open at the time. Spark Video, uh, again, uh, like I mentioned earlier, another easy to use tool, but it's for creating uh, video content. So uh, it's, it can incorporate animation. It can incorporate other videos. It can incorporate voiceover narration. And I've got a few of them here. Most of them have audio to some degree, which because I'm plugged directly into my laptop uh, to share this with you on my screen, you won't see the, uh, you won't hear, sorry, the audio. But just to give you an idea, let's just grab one of these. Like so, and you can see down at the bottom, it's a series of essentially a slide metaphor, kind of like PowerPoint. And I can use icons, I can use images, I can bring in other, other video clips as well. And essentially, I build out this story, right? So if I want to see how the whole thing looks, I can just click the play button, and you'll you can see the transitions and the effects, but you can, you won't hear the audio. But it actually has background music uh, as well as voiceover narration uh, by yours truly. And I won't go through the whole thing here, but you can see how things move through. And much like Spark Page and Post, I've got the option to change the theme. So if I look here under themes, I can change it to um, a variety of different themes and get a different look and feel than the one I currently have. Again, trying to keep this easy and, and putting the technology in the background so you can focus on, on telling your story. Um, recording your audio is as simple as tapping on that little microphone button. You hold your finger on the mic button and you talk. And when you're done talking, you let go of the mic button and it's recorded. You can listen to it. And if you like it, you can stay with it. If you don't like it, you can just tap it again, hold on to it and re-record the audio for that particular slide. So it's a very easy thing to do uh, and, and, and a lot of fun because you can focus on, again, just telling the story you want to tell. Okay, get myself rotated back around here. There we go. So those are just three of the of our really easy to use um, tools that are available um, and that downloadable or available through the web. Uh, we've got a variety of different other tools, though, too. And we've, I've talked a bit about capabilities of Lightroom and the, the granular control you have over your images. Um, but there's some things Lightroom just doesn't do. Lightroom doesn't do things like um, masking or image collaging in the same way we might normally do in Photoshop. Uh, it has some corrective tools, and there's more than there were uh, six months ago. But um, sometimes it's just not exactly the kind of correction tools you need for retouching and things like that. So for that, we've got other tools to work with. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring up a different application here, Photoshop Fix. Uh, Photoshop Fix is a tool for correcting uh, images, for fixing problems, hence the name. Uh, and this is one example I have here. I do I go camping every year with uh, some friends of mine. And my good buddy, Tom, who you see over on the right-hand side, he's always managing to get into my postcard photos. Uh, so in this case here, um, you know, at the time, I, I couldn't effectively remove uh, image uh, image content using Lightroom Mobile. It just wasn't available. It's now actually available. You can actually use healing and cloning inside of Lightroom. But uh, just to give you an idea, I'm just going to zoom in a bit here. I'm going to tap the healing button. And as much as I like my buddy Tom, I'm just going to paint over him. Again, just using my finger here. I'm not uh, getting too fancy with a stylus or anything like that. And once I let go, 95% of the work is done. I got a couple little spots to touch up there, maybe like so. 
this edge here, and just over there, I think. And before you know it, my uh, landscape is pristine again, and uh, with other with other soles standing in it. Uh, very easy to do. I have a lot of control over editing that. Uh, the, the brushes I'm using in terms of the size, in terms of the softness or hardness, uh, so I get a, a true sense of, of how I can correct this. As well as doing that, I'm just going to I'm going to cancel out of that one. I've also got the ability to adjust, so I can go ahead and adjust contrast, saturation, shadows, and so on. And I've already done a bit of that in this image. Uh, I can heal, as we saw earlier. I can play around with the, with the brightness. I can even paint or play around with, with soft focus. I can defocus an area by painting over it and reducing its uh, sharpness so that the eye doesn't, doesn't stay too long on something I don't want it to look at. So I've got lots of capabilities there right inside of this tool. And once again, I have the ability to share this. I tap on share. I can save it to camera roll. I can, really exciting for me, I can actually send this to Photoshop. And when I do send it, it'll come back, come into Photoshop as a layered file. So as I do those things like removing somebody from the scene or making other types of um, effects or uh, applying different types of effects to an image, those things are stored as layer effects. And when I open up the Photoshop file, it remains completely editable. I can also save it to our Creative Cloud libraries. I can, if I really want to, contribute it to our Adobe Stock program or share it to Instagram or Behance or Facebook. Lots of options, again, to, to, to sort of get the technology in the back seat and allow you to create and correct or illustrate however you want to do it. Now, another one that's uh, kind of nice, if you're not the photography type, more of the illustrative type, um, and that's something that I, I work with quite a bit. Uh, I don't do a lot of illustration, but I like sort of, sort of uh, dabbling in it myself. And we have two tools for this. There's one of them is called Photoshop Sketch. And I'm just going to get out of that. Okay, go away. I've got lots of different applications and there are different, uh, different pieces that I've created. This is one example I did. I started based on a photograph and I used um, my finger and a stylus to essentially paint out or color in rather. Don't want to do that. Um, different elements so I can actually turn what was once a photograph into an illustration. You can see I've got different layers here that have different elements. So I can tap on these, maybe tap on the boat here and hide it from view. And you can kind of see that each thing is, out, is essentially um, on its own layer and very controllable. I can change the stacking order uh, and essentially build out my own illustrations. I'm the kind of guy that, uh, not much of an illustrator, but I can trace fairly well. So uh, I can build out things that way if I like. And I'm just gonna close that project out and just, just start with something new. Again, that plus sign comes in. Um, there we go, tap on the plus sign. Lots of different sizes to start with. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead with iPad landscape. I end up with that blank canvas and I've got a whole series of different configurable brushes over here on the side. So I'm not gonna go ahead and paint anything particularly artistic at the moment, but let's go ahead and pick a different color, something that stands out. And then as I paint, you can see I'm getting some very organic effects with these tools. Go back in, maybe I want to have more of a, a sketch kind of feel to things. This is what happens when, when Jim doesn't have a photograph to trace from. The artwork gets a little more simplistic, but you can see it's very quick uh, to work with. And I've seen some phenomenal illustrative work done with, with this tool. It just blows me away that, that what people can do. I've even got the ability, for example, I'll just throw something in there. If I don't like part of it, I can even erase some of it as well. So I've got an eraser in there as well. I can smooth things out. I can blend the colors as well. So I'll just go back a couple steps. But you can produce some really interesting results with this. Oops. Close that again. So I'll scroll through here, back to the projects. And I've done various things. I've even incorporated vector shapes, grid stamps. My, you know, it's it's really you're only limited by how creative you want to be and how much time you want to spend trying things out. You know, I've combined a variety of elements here, photographs, um, color, textures. Uh, and shapes that I've literally stamped in, like the the bird in the upper upper corner there. Well, and these were many of these started as actual photographs, 
and they were converted to vector shapes using another one of our tools called Adobe Capture. So that's one of our, our illustration tools. Now we're hopping back and forth a bit to uh, capturing, hence the name, Adobe Capture. This is an interesting tool, and this is one that I think that anybody uh, can use and, um, and have some fun with. Uh, Adobe Capture, based on its name, does quite a few different things. It captures content. Uh, it can capture shapes uh, and create vector, scalable vector shapes from photographs. It can capture type and recommend typefaces based on the type you've snapped a picture of, maybe on the street. Uh, it can analyze an image and give you a color palette. It can create three-dimensional, uh, 3D uh, material textures for you to use in 3D programs like Adobe Dimension or other 3D applications that are out there. And it can also create patterns and brushes, which you could use in this case, in brushes you could use in Photoshop or Illustrator. So I'll give you an example of how I can, what I can do with this. You'll see I've got, there's that bird that you saw earlier. Just pop back over there. Quite a few different things in here. This is just one uh, library collection. This is uh, some stuff I'm done for a, um, a camping theme. And many of these things started off, I think actually all of them, uh, were photographs of objects. Uh, what's interesting is the photographs of the, the images of the moose and the deck chair and the, the car with the canoe, these are all photographs of labels that were hung over um, various bottles in a retail store. And I just used them as the inspiration, nice and simple. I knew I wasn't going to be able to effectively draw realistically a moose or a deck chair. It's just not my area. But I could photograph something with my phone and convert that. So I'll give you an idea of how this works. I can either take a brand new photograph with the, with the uh, device camera, or I can search my photograph. So I'm going to go here to camera roll. And there's that moose. And you can see right away, it's already uh, started to vectorize it, right? So what I want to do is I want to flip this around. Actually, no, I want to go this way, don't I? Yes, I do. And I'm going to play around with the uh, the selectivity of the of the image. I want to sort of reduce this down to just basically black and white. Now it did a pretty good job there, but I've still got some work to do. So I'm going to click the checkbox. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and use the eraser tool. Oops, sorry, my bad. The, paint, the paintbrush tool to paint over those other areas. So I can clean this up very, very effectively. And before you know it, I've actually got um, that, that icon of the moose. If I want this to create this as a stamp that I can fill with color, I just go the other way around. I switch this out to reverse it out so the moose is black. And same idea here. In this case, I'll erase normally. Oops, there we go. Tapped too fast. But the same idea, I'm just getting rid of all these little bits of detail, including my name. Don't need that in there for the icon. And I can zoom in by, whoops, by pinching and zooming normally. I'll do that. There we go. And I can just continue on to erase. And eventually I'll get down to the point where this is a nice clean image that I can then use to stamp into other uh, illustrations. It uses vectors right inside of Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, and create my own, um, you know, start my own story in a different way by working with iconography in this case, rather than uh, traditional imagery. So I'm just gonna go and click done on that one. It's going to save it automatically to my Creative Cloud library. The great thing about this is that these icons, these vector images are available to me in my desktop application virtually immediately. If I was to open up Photoshop or Illustrator um, on the desktop right now, I'd be able to go into this Creative Cloud library and I would have those uh, vector objects available for me to use. Uh, and I haven't even had to, you know, I could have been doing this on the bus or in the coffee shop. It doesn't matter, right? I'm happy to be at my desk right now, but it doesn't really matter where I am. I can start that process. Color is the same kind of thing. It's all based on an image in this case. You can select an image or you can, um, let's go ahead and go back to my camera roll and go to my moments here and let's find something interesting to work with. It's got some lots of color to it. Oh, let's grab this here. By selecting an image, notice right away what happens here. 
It finds the predominant five colors in the image and selects them. Now, I'm not stuck with them. If I think there's way too many greens in here, I'd like a little bit more variety, maybe another shade of pink, I can grab any one of these dots and bring it over to the area that I want. So I can create these color sets very easily. If I like what I see, I just click the checkbox. I can further edit things if I want to. I can change, go move into color harmonies, or I can refer back to the image if I want to. I can switch between RGB, CMYK, lab, and HFT values. And when I'm happy with this result, you can see harmonies as well. I can go ahead and move between those guys. I click done. There's my theme. I can rename the theme so it makes a little more sense. And it's currently being saved in that same folder with all my other shapes. So I've got the ability to very quickly generate color themes. And this can be challenging for, for someone who's not uh, necessarily working in illustration or color or photography every day. It's not their specialty. Picking colors can be really intimidating. So why not have the benefit of pulling in a common image that's going to be part of your research paper, part of your your poster, part of your story, um, and use that image to pull up the, the predominant colors so you can make it look a little more visually appealing, a little more vibrant by adding splashes of color here and there. And it's a very similar process with the other, other tools as well. Patterns is kind of fun. Again, same idea. I can go to my camera roll. I can pick anything uh, from here. Uh, as nondescript as you can imagine, or maybe not even an image that's really uh, particularly appealing, I'll just go, I'll grab this one because it's got some lines to it. And I can go ahead and create a variety of different options. There's my pattern options. I can, by zooming in and zooming out, let's see, I get a whole different look and feel. and create some very interesting patterns. Think of uh, textiles, uh, curtains, drapes, fabrics of any kind. I can start building out patterns here that I can use later on in Photoshop and Illustrator to fill in vector objects. Um, and it's, it's one of those things, it's like a, it's like a little magic kaleidoscope, right, right, at, right at the palm of your hand. When I get the kind of look and feel I want, I click the checkbox again, and this gives me the ability to further edit this. Look just by rotating this, the kind of changes that occur, right? So, when I like it, I click done, pattern is saved, just like that. So again, very quick, very easy to do. Now, how are we doing on time? It looks like we're almost out. So we I'm are going to- We are almost out of time, and I have a couple of questions for you. Sure, okay. I'm gonna hop back over to the, the main room here. And okay, so I had um, wanted to, Eleanor wants to know if it's available for Android, and I'm assuming she means um, page, Spark page. That's a great question. The Spark tools aren't on Android publicly yet. We're in active beta for Android for Spark, but all the other mobile apps like Capture and, and Lightroom and, and Mix and Fix, uh, they're all available for Android as well. So we're gonna see more happening, I think, in the next few months with Android for the Spark tools. In the meantime, though, and I'm just gonna hop over to my browser here, you can actually go to, um, let me just type the full URL in here, spark.adobe.com, whoops, typing too fast. And this gives you access to all the things I was showing you in a desktop web application, okay? So I can create posts, I can create pages, I can create uh, videos right from here. Just again, by clicking on the plus sign, what do I wanna create, a post, a page, or a video? Just the same process we saw on the mobile application, but all sort of centralized into one uh, web application on the desktop. Okay. Um, okay, then I had a question about memory. How much memory is required to run this? Um, and I'm assuming from a PC, I'm not sure. Um, um, I think that part wasn't specified. Okay. The um, I couldn't give you an exact number on that. I've never had any problems with performance uh, on my mobile, okay. on my phone or my, my tablet at all. And web apps work quite smoothly as well uh, through um, through the desktop, whether it's okay. Lightroom or whether yeah, it's- Yeah, because it's web-based, yeah. web so it's not as, okay. Yeah. So it won't be as many 
intensive. Okay, that's great. Um, and then um, we had a request for people to wanted to know more about each individual app because, mm -hmm. uh, and we had discussed this, and I think we started with this. But I feel, but um, but a couple of people feel like they would like some more, like one hour on each of these, as opposed to a shorter kind of, mm -hmm. you know, sure. thing. Sure. Is there any way to kind of get that scheduled? And I'm I'm on the training committee, so I can kind of work with our people over there and um, and figure out dates and times and things like that. So yeah, we can certainly look into that on uh, based on availability and stuff like that. That's something okay. I'm I'm happy to discuss with with my, okay. with you and and Kirsten and, and other other people at the school. In the meantime, though, for those of you who want to just get a sense of what, what these tools can do, I just went to adobe.com and I've got my dashboard loaded because I'm signed in to Adobe uh, as, a, as an Adobe user. And this gives me a breakdown of the different mobile apps and what they can do. And you can see we kind of just touched the tip of the iceberg with these, with these uh, tools. So there's lots there. And if you click on any one of them, you can learn a bit more about them. Yes, definitely. And That's I good. So also, just bear with me. I, I think at the very, uh, I've also got links at the bottom of this um, Spark page that I was using as my presentation that sort of take you to uh, okay. tutorials for the mobile apps as well. So lots of information there, and I'm happy to share this with you. Okay. So yeah, Adobe's never really um, stingy with the. Uh, with the tutorial, so that's good. No, so, no, that's um, we, we want you to have fun um, with them. People that would like to get a copy of the presentation itself, <laughs> like your um, your PowerPoint. Yep, yep. It's actually not a PowerPoint. It's a Spark page, and yes, it's available. Um, okay. I, I'll share the link, and people can 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 refer to it. Uh, they okay. can, can print it out if they in want the to. Chat area. Sure. Can you post the Let link to that in the copy chat. Copy this. For us? Yeah. That would be great. Give me a sec here. I'll just okay, guys, he's going to post that link in the chat area for us all to take with us. So that will be awesome. We can um, have that link. And am I pop? Oh, chat. There we go. Okay. Let's expand that down. There we go. And here is the link. He says. Oh, there we go. Boom. Just like that. Oh, awesome. Thank you. You're all right, welcome. you guys, all get that. I'm going to save it so just in case if we need to get sure. it back and out to everybody. Sure, and you can always reach out to me directly, and I'm happy to share it again. So no problem at all. Okay, thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining. I hope you got something out of this and uh, that you're excited to try some of these applications definitely. for yourself and your students. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you so much for everything. You're welcome. All right, everybody have a great day. Thanks for attending. Take care. Bye, Everybody, all. Everybody, thank you. All right. Bye-bye.